Hey everybody, welcome back to, uh, I almost said welcome back to AOC because that's about what we're going to talk about, but I meant to say SJG Perspective. That would be more appropriate. Um, on this little sweet video I'm going to do, I don't know if it's going to be sweet, but it's uh, going to be something. Let's take a look and take a quick listen to, you guys have probably heard it, it's on the news. I don't think it's on the news enough. I don't think people are talking about it enough, um, but let's take a quick little listen here and um, then chat about it for a second. AOC or her staff be headed to jail. It looks like they've committed some massive campaign Hopefully. finance violations so serious that they might actually be criminal in nature. According Weird. to a complaint filed with the Federal Election Commission on Monday, two political action committees run by AOC's mm -hmm. top aide funneled more than a million dollars to shell companies that that person actually owned. Now, not only I could be wrong on this, but I think it's her boyfriend, too. I think I think it was her boyfriend. I will be willing to be told I'm wrong on that, but I'm going to look more into this as it goes through. But I think it was her boyfriend. Does this violate AOC's own promise to keep her finances transparent? Yeah. It violates. Isn't that awesome how she's like, is she, we're going to do on this too. I'm going to throw up at the end of this, the uh, uh, clips of her mocking Donald Trump for, for, for campaign finance issues and for being um, this whole uh, very, um, condescending um, speech she had in, in, in Congress about how she played along, about how this, uh, Stephen Crowder did a clip on it, about how she says she, you know, so what if somebody did this and that and this and blah, 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 blah. and uh, would that be okay? Well, no, that wouldn't be okay. And meanwhile, behind the scenes, this arrogant twit was doing and had done far freaking worse. It, it totally violated the very thing that she was arrogantly acting like she um, w was condemning. FEC reporting Plot. requirements and may have violated the $5,000 contribution limit, limit from federal PACs to candidates. By the way, Dinesh D'Souza was arrested for this and was put spent almost a year in jail for that five thousand dollar limit. He actually had three friends that contributed to a to a, some political person and uh, he got arrested for it. It normally would have been a slap on the hand. It wasn't a very big deal, but for that low as low as limit as it was, but he actually went to jail for a year for it. But AOC, eh, there's nothing going on with her as of yet. Now, if AOC or her multi-millionaire chief of staff intentionally violated the law they could each face jail time oh god please and let to that be clear, happen anytime you're funneling a million dollars from a campaign to other accounts you know exactly what the hell you're doing attorney gail trotter visited fox business network a million to explain dollars how big of an issue this dollars. actually is take a look there was a recent case in 2015 under similar factual allegations of this uh, with AOC and her campaign. And the person who was prosecuted for those criminal allegations had, had to serve jail time. So this is a very serious allegation that could really derail the um, socialist want-to-be of the Democratic Party. Experts say there is definitely something shady going on here, with a complaint calling the arrangement, quote, an elaborate scheme to avoid proper disclosure of campaign expenditures. Tom Anderson, the director of the National Legal and Policy Center's Government Integrity Project, said, quote, it appears Alexandra Cortez and her associates ran an off-the-books operation to the tune of hundreds of thousands of dollars thus violating the foundation of all campaign finance law transparency. Is, or one of my last questions, I guess I'd say, is, is it possible that any elements of this story apply to our current government and our current public servants right now? Yes. Yes. So we have a system that is fundamentally broken. We have these influences existing in this body, which means that these influences are here in this committee shaping the questions that are being asked of you all right now. Would you say that that's correct, yes. Mr. Marabani or Mr. Shelby? Yes. Transparency, the very thing she rails about that we need. I'm telling you what, man, there's a whole bunch of fake politicians There's a, on the left and on the right. But man, when it comes to AOC and when it comes to some of these newer candidates that are or, or, or newer freshmen that are in the Congress, and when it comes to the left, 
they rage and they set themselves up as these beacons of uh, uh, humanity and these beacons of uh, honesty and these beacons of trust and they caring about the little man and caring about the pe- you know you know uh, uh, um, the social justice and they they signal the virtue louder than anybody but they are the biggest hypocritical lying pieces of crap that there is. He also said that quote I've never seen a more ambitious operation <laughs> to circumvent reporting requirements. Well, she is ambitious. Now, in the months after starting the PAC, more than 80% of contributions were actually funneled to these shell companies. AOC's chief of staff says they were simply doing something that was, quote, brand new. Basically, we as commoners, I guess, wouldn't understand it is what they're trying to imply. He sent out a classic cover-your-ass tweet after the controversy erupted, claiming that JD and BNC, their shell companies getting the campaign money, did, quote, nothing wrong. His tweet said the JD and BNC websites had this explainer on it before Ryan Graham ever asked us. We were doing something, quote, totally new, which meant a new setup. So we were transparent about it from the start. Now, he even sent out the link saying, here's me talking about this on MSNBC in May 2016. All right, let me just say this to you, Mr. AOC Chief of Staff. We understand exactly what you did. You broke campaign finance laws to commit fraud, and now that you got busted for it, you tried to cover it up by claiming you were quoting, well, you're just doing something new. Are you kidding me? Do you actually think we're this dumb to buy this tweet from you? No, but they actually think that all of our supporters are. They think that they all, we're just spinning it. Us conservative, bigoted, racist assholes, fascist assholes are just spinning it to try to bring down AOC. We're not just reporting the truth and the facts. That's what they think. Now, Avadi Nodi, director of the Campaign Legal Center and a former FEC lawyer, said, quote, I read their explanation multiple times, and I still don't understand it. He was also quoted as saying, They're either confused or they're trying to conceal something. They're both. I think they're I think they're probably both. They're obvious. She's obviously a little confused. As we know, leading up to this point, she's, you know, got the IQ of a rock. And so then, you know, in the eyes of a bug. um, Two bugs. But honestly, they are not the brightest bulbs in the socket right not exactly the sharpest darts in the board but they are not as you know uh, um, uh, mother Teresa as she'd like to portray either and that's starting to become evident I'm just waiting for the massive calls for a special prosecutor to investigate these million dollar schemes I'm waiting for the FBI to raid the chief of staff's office I'm waiting for right. the feds to knock down the door of AOC's apartment at, th- at 5 a.m. with the media, of course, alerted on the front end to catch it all live. I'm waiting for Congress to... He's making a, a point at what they did to Roger Stone, obviously, which was far, far, not even almost near what we're talking about here in, in regards to legalities or criminality. Subpoena all the bank records related to her campaign. And I'm waiting for the media to start connecting AOC to any shady donor who might have any sort of connection to Russians in New York. You understand where I'm going with this. I'm waiting for other elected officials to demand that she resign immediately or Mm -hmm. be impeached from Congress over this massive fraud. Oh, wait, I forgot. None of that's going to happen. Right. Because AOC is a Democrat. And that is how Washington and the media works right now. Right. Absolutely. It probably won't happen. If you see how Pelosi's covered for Ilhan Omar and you see how, you know, Linda Sarsour is, it has mobilized all these people to, to, to protect her sister. And as you see how the, uh, the, the, the left and they are absolute liars and fakes and they spin everything and then they want to point the finger at Trump on everything. It's he's the bad guy. He's the bad. He does all these terrible bad things. It's absolutely such a shit show. It's an absolute shit show. And if you can't see that, you're not looking. So interesting article on this, interesting little clips on this. I'm going to do some more. And I think I'll add some of those uh, at the end of this. I'm going to add that the, the, the uh, uh, what she did in con- or what she did in, um, in Congress 
and um, that little speech she gave just to show how transparently hypocritical this twat is. Anyways, um, if you like what I'm saying, subscribe, SJG Perspective. If not, don't. All right, guys. Until next time, talk to you later. Bye. Let's play a lightning round game. I'm going to be the bad guy, which I'm sure half the room would agree with anyway. And, um, and I want to get away with as much bad things as possible, ideally to enrich myself and advance my interest, even if that means putting, uh, putting my interests ahead of the American people. So, uh, Mrs. Hobart Flynn. Oh, and by the way, I have enlisted all of you as my co-conspirators. So you're gonna help me legally get away with all of this. So, Mrs. Hobart Flynn, I want to run. If I wanna run a campaign that is entirely funded by corporate political action committees, is, that, is there anything that legally prevents me from doing that? No. Okay, so there's nothing stopping me from being entirely funded by corporate PACs, say, from the fossil fuel industry, the healthcare industry, big pharma. I'm entirely 100% lobbyist PAC uh, funded. Okay, so let's say I'm a really, really bad guy. And let's say I have some skeletons in my closet that I need to cover up so that I can get elected. Um, Mr. Smith, is it true that you wrote this article, this opinion piece for the Washington Post entitled, these payments to women were unseemly, that doesn't mean they were illegal? Well, I can't see the piece, but I wrote a piece under that headline in the Post, so I assume that's right. Okay, great. So, green light for hush money. I can do all sorts of terrible things. It's totally legal right now for me to pay people off, and that is considered speech. That money is considered speech. So I use my special interest dark money funded campaign to pay off folks that I need to pay off and get elected. So now I'm elected, now I'm in. I've got the power to draft, lobby, and shape the laws that govern the United States of America. Fabulous. Now, is there any hard limit that I have? Perhaps, uh, Mrs. Hobart Flynn, is there any hard limit that I have in terms of what legislation I'm allowed to touch? Are there any limits on the laws that I can write or influence, especially if I'm uh, based on the uh, special interest funds that I accepted to finance my campaign and get me elected in the first place. There's no limit. So there's none. So I can be totally funded by oil and, ga and gas. I can be totally funded by big pharma. Come in, write big pharma laws, and there's no limits to that whatsoever. That's right. Okay. So awesome. Now, uh, now, Mr. Marabani, the last thing I want to do is get rich with as little work possible. That's really what I'm trying to do as the bad guy, right? So is there anything preventing me from holding stocks, say, in an oil or gas company, and then writing laws to deregulate that, that industry and cause, you know, that could potentially cause the stock value to soar and accrue a lot of money in that time? You could do that. So I could do that. I could do that now with the way our current laws are, are set up. Yes? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, so my last question is, or one of my last questions, I guess I'd say, is, is it possible that any elements of this story apply to our current government and our current public servants right now? Yes. Yes. So we have a system that is fundamentally broken. We have these influences existing in this body, which means that these influences are here in this committee shaping the questions that are being asked of you all right now. Would you say that that's correct, yes. Mr. Marabani or Mr. Schaub? Yes. All right, so one last thing, uh, Mr. Schaub. In relation to congressional oversight that we have, the limits that are placed on me as a Congresswoman, compared to the executive branch and compared to, say, the President of the United States, would you say that Congress has the same sort of standard of accountability? Are there, is there more teeth in that regulation in Congress on the president? Or would you say it's about even or more so on the federal? Um, in terms of laws that apply to the president, mm -hmm. yeah, there's just almost no laws at all that apply to the president. So I'm being held, and every person in this body is being held to a higher ethical standard than the president of the United States. 
That's right, because there are some committee uh, ethics committee rules that apply to you. And it's already super legal, as we've seen, for me to be a pretty bad guy. So right. it's even easier for the President of the United States to be one, I would assume. That's right. Thank you very much.